How's everybody doing? Thought I would make another video before I went into work. This is something I've been thinking about as the memorial's coming up. So, you know, I've been wanting to do a video about why I can't go to the memorial anymore. And it's because as I have gotten to study the Bible in context, I have found out that um, there's some things that the witnesses do that just aren't scriptural. You know, and I mean, granted, I am agnostic nowadays, to be perfectly honest. You know, I'm not really sure what to believe. I mean, I'm definitely not an enemy of Jesus. I'm definitely not an enemy of Jehovah or God or anything like that. So, you know, I don't want any witnesses watching this to think, oh, well, see, you know, he, you know, he hates the Bible and Jesus anyway. So, you know, what's the point listening to him? And that's not the case. You know, if anything, I want the Bible to be true. You know, if anything, I want there to be a Jesus that came to earth to redeem us from our sins, that is going to give us everlasting life if we try to live a good moral life, and really just show our gratitude by living our life in a way that is very morally good, I guess you could say, chaste. So these are principles that I still love, even as, a, as uh, an agnostic, you know, and I still live with the creed, treat others like you want to be treated. So even though I have abandoned Watchtower and Jehovah's Witnesses, I definitely haven't abandoned, you know, the hope of Jesus, our Redeemer, our God. Or even the Bible, for that matter. I'm just a skeptic. And I think that I speak for most agnostics here when, you know, our answer to all of this, having been said and studied, is we don't know. And to me, that's the most honest approach you could ever take, is we don't know. So, you know, a lot of you that might be watching that our witnesses are saying, oh my God, I can't believe he's not going to go to the memorial. That is the unforgivable. You know, everybody who is a witness, active, you know, witness, inactive witness, whatever, knows the memorial is the one meeting out of the year that you don't miss. That's the one that you go to, whether you're disfellowshipped, you know, whether you're inactive or anything like that. And I'll tell you why I can't do it again. It's not that I can't go to one again. I mean, obviously, I can go to one if I want to. But I'll tell you the reasons that I don't feel comfortable from a Christian perspective. You know, if we're talking, you know, the Bible being our main book of authority here and the book that we should go by. I don't feel comfortable going to the memorial for Christian reasons. Okay? So, if you notice, and, and you know, if you're an ex-witness or an active witness or if you've never been a witness, let me just give you a rundown of what happens at a memorial of Jehovah's Witnesses. The memorial is, you know, supposed to be for the remembrance of Christ's death, his um, propitiatory sacrifice, his ransom sacrifice to redeem mankind, and um, all of that good stuff. Okay, so it's usually about an hour. It's on nice and 14th, the uh, night that uh, Jesus supposedly died. Um, but here's where things get different and even strange for a lot of onlookers if you are not an active witness or someone associated with the witnesses for a long time. The emblems are passed, and it's literally just like this. You have the wine glass, you look at it, and then you go like this and you give it to someone else. And if you look at it, it almost looks like a ritual rejection. It really does. It kind of has that appearance, because it's like, okay, you handed me the glass. I am not of the 144,000, so I will not partake. Now, here's... You know, you do the same thing with unleavened bread, too. You pass it, and then you pass it off. So, you know, if you've ever been to a memorial of Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll know that that's the case. Now, this is where things, I think, you know, get strange because, you know, it is weird that we don't partake of that. Now, active witnesses are sitting here watching this, and they're saying, well, if you were a witness, then you know why we don't do it, Deasis. We don't do it because we're not of the 144,000. Here's the problem with that, witnesses. Did you know that we as an official doctrine, uh, you know, we as, as witnesses, I say we, but did you know that, you know, official Jehovah's Witness doctrine, official governing body and watchtower doctrine is that Christ is not your mediator, and that's why you do not partake. Because Christ isn't your mediator. He is the mediator for the 144,000. Now, I know you guys are very attached to this teaching, and I was too, but the truth is, it isn't a scriptural teaching. First of all, the 144,000 were, you know, the Jews, and that's why right after that number is mentioned in Revelation, it also mentions the tribes that the 144,000 come from. There is no future fulfillment of this. They were talking about the natural Jews. 
you know, it's not fair that Watchtower gets to dictate, oh, well, you know, the 144,000, you see, that was literal, but, you know, the tribes mentioned right after that, well, see, those are figurative. You see, they don't get to decide that because they're not inspired. And they claim that they're spirit-directed, but that's the same thing. Either way, they're not inspired, so they can't know this. Because there is no further description or elaboration uh, or fulfillment of this. It simply is what it is. You either accept it or you don't. And I'm sorry if this upsets a lot of witnesses that are watching this, but this, these are just the facts. This is just the reality of the situation. So, there was a few things I wanted to show you guys here about this, uh, you know memorial stuff. Uh, for the witnesses that are watching this that don't believe me, there's a couple of things I want to show you real quick. Alright, so I don't know if you can see this, but if you look up, um, this is the Watchtower Online Library. Now all of you witnesses, you know about this. Okay, I still have it. Um, if you look up Mediator and you read around in the Watchtower Online Library, there is... Um, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong here. This is a screenshot, but the desire for peace and security worldwide, uh, Watchtower <clears throat> Online Library. I'm not exactly sure where this is, but you can look it up for yourself, but I'm going to read it to you. Now, this is straight from Watchtower. This is not from an apostate site. This is not from some uh, anything like that. This is no distortion of facts that this has not been reworded or anything like that. So before you JWs freak out, this is straight from the horse's mouth, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, um, this is paragraph 16 of a lesson, The Desire for Peace and Security Worldwide. Um, I forget exactly what lesson it is. I can't find it. It's a screenshot. My apologies. Just as the ancient nation of Israel was in a covenant relationship with Jehovah God through the mediator Moses, so the nation of spiritual Israel, the Israel of God, has a covenant relationship through a mediator. Galatians 6.16. It is as the Apostle Paul wrote in his Christian fellow worker, or to his Christian fellow worker, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, a man, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5. Was Moses the mediator between Jehovah and mankind in general? No, he was the mediator between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, and the nation of their fleshly descendants. Likewise, all right, now here's where it gets interesting. Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited only to 144,000 members. This spiritual nation is like a little flock of Jehovah's sheep-like ones. Revel, uh, Romans 9, 6, Revelation 7, 4. All right, so there's a few things that I want to talk about here. Um, the scriptures. You know, I talked about Revelation, and Revelation is talking about 144,000, and Watchtower says, well, you know, 144,000 is literal. However, um, the tribes are, are figurative. All right, so let's, let's look at a couple of these scriptures here. And this is the first one that I want to start it out with, and this is the one thing that makes it um, impossible for me to go back to going to a memorial. This is why my Christian conscience and, you know, my leftover love for the Bible and, uh, you know, that, that little bit that I hold on to and cling to, hoping that there is some truth in it, hoping that there is some divinity in it, this is what bothers my conscience, okay? And this is, this is the reason that I don't feel comfortable. Now, this isn't me trying to sway you either way, but I'm telling you, this is why I don't feel comfortable. And I feel the need to preach about this. John 6, 53, it says, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, if you read that, you go back and you read that in context. He's not talking about the 144,000. He's not talking about the ones that are going to heaven. He's not talking about any of that. He's talking about people. He's saying, those who do not accept me, those who do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life left in you. Well, what do we do when we go to the memorial? We ritualistically reject the blood and the bread of Jesus. At least that's what it looks like to me. I mean, decide for yourself, but that's what it looks like to me. These are, these are my observations, you know, of, you know, being a witness. And so the next scripture that I want to share with you is John 14, 6. In John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus didn't say, you know, I am the you know, the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me and the 144,000. That's not mentioned anywhere in that book. In that whole book, if you go back and read not just the chapter, but the whole book, you'll find out there isn't anything mentioned about the 144,000 or the 12 tribes or any of that. Jesus was saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. That means that you don't have 
a mediator anymore. There is no organized religion that can take the place of Jesus. And if they do do that, they have done just that. They've taken the place of Jesus. So this is why I don't feel comfortable going there anymore, because I don't feel like it's scriptural. It's taken out of scriptural context, what they, what they teach. This in scriptural context basically says, Jesus saying point blank, I'm the truth and the life. You don't come to the Father except through me. Not the 144,000, not the governing body, not Watchtower, not the Catholic Church, not the bat, whoever. Not Buddha. It doesn't matter. Nobody. So, that was going to a memorial. This is why my Christian conscience and, you know, my leftover love for the Bible and, uh, you know, that, that little bit that I hold on to and cling to, hoping that there is some truth in it, hoping that there is some divinity in it, this is what bothers my conscience, okay? And this is, this is the reason that I don't feel comfortable. Now, this isn't me trying to sway you either way, but I'm telling you, this is why I don't feel comfortable. And I feel the need to preach about this. John 6, 53, it says, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now, if you read that, you go back and you read that in context. He's not talking about the 144,000. He's not talking about the ones that are going to heaven. He's not talking about any of that. He's talking about people. He's saying, those who do not accept me, those who do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life left in you. Well, what do we do when we go to the memorial? We ritualistically reject the blood and the bread of Jesus. At least that's what it looks like to me. I mean, decide for yourself, but that's what it looks like to me. These are, these are my observations, you know, of, you know, being a witness. And so the next scripture that I want to share with you is John 14, 6. In John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus didn't say, you know, I am the, you know, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me and the 144,000. That's not mentioned anywhere in that book. In that whole book, if you go back and read not just the chapter, but the whole book, you'll find out there isn't anything mentioned about the 144,000 or the 12 tribes or any of that. Jesus was saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. That means that you don't have a mediator anymore. There is no organized religion that can take the place of Jesus. And if they do do that, they have done just that. They've taken the place of Jesus. So this is why I don't feel comfortable going there anymore, because I don't feel like it's scriptural. It's taken out of scriptural context, what they, what they teach. This in scriptural context basically says, Jesus saying point blank, I'm the truth and the life. You don't come to the Father except through me. Not the 144,000, not the governing body, not Watchtower, not the Catholic Church, not the bat, whoever. Not Buddha. It doesn't matter. Nobody. So, that was another scripture that if you read it in context, it doesn't have anything to do with any kind of a mediator between us and Jesus. No, Jesus said, no, no, you're my mediator, or I'm your mediator. He said, I'm the mediator between God and mankind. So, you know, he didn't give authority to any uh, parable, you know, faithful and discreet slave or anything like that. That was a parable that Jesus used that had no future fulfillment. So the faithful and discreet slave was just a parable used by Jesus. So, you know, I feel, I feel like they have inserted them. I feel like Watchtower and the 144,000 have inserted themselves between us and Jesus. But Jesus said that I am the truth and the way. So here's the third scripture, and this is also in the paragraph that I just read. 1 Timothy 2, 5. There is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Jesus Christ. So how is it that 1 Timothy 2, 5 says there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, and then Watchtower turns around and says, 
Jesus Christ is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. Okay, so Jesus Christ is not the mediator between Jehovah God and mankind. 1 Timothy 2, 5. There is one God and one mediator between God and mankind. Jesus Christ. These things are just irreconcilable. And you can get mad at me all you want, you know, uh, my former brothers and sisters. You can get mad at me all you want. But the thing is, I'm not quoting anything wrong here. I'm not saying any falsehood. I didn't say anything wrong. There is no lies here. This is the truth straight out of the horse's mouth. So, you know, those are just some things that bother me when I go to um, the Kingdom Hall or I go to the memorial and um, I see this happening. And I used to always wonder, you know, why did this happen? Well, you know, there's a lot of reasons why it probably happens, but a few things that I've looked up that made it even more interesting is that um, these are also practices of Freemasonry, where they keep people from knowing Jesus, and they keep Jesus from you. And um, Kim and Mikey on YouTube, Kim and Mikey actually have a really good video. Um, I think it's called Jehovah's Witnesses and Freemasons, or Jehovah's Witnesses and Freemasonry. Well, anyways, it's a long video, but he has a book that he goes over where he talks about how they ritualistically um, encourage people to reject Jesus through very subtle means. Well, what are you know? What does Watchtower do? And I'm sorry, once again, the truth hurts, but this is just the reality of the situation. Um, they subtly get us to reject Jesus. They say, oh, well, of course we believe in Jesus, you know, but, but that's not the case. And, you know, it always baffled me for so many years why people on the street, every time we'd go preach to them, would say, oh, well, you guys don't believe in Jesus. Well, there's a reason that people don't think that we believe in Jesus. It's because we've got a lot of customs that completely go against what Jesus actually taught and wanted. And... Um, and, and do kind of push him off to the side. You know, like this whole Christ is not your mediator. He's the mediator, you know, only for the 144,000. Even though that goes completely against the, the actual scriptures when they're read in their proper context. Their proper context. Remember that. And um, Son of Thunder also um, did a really good video. Uh, if you look up Son of Thunder, uh, I think it was scriptures that Jehovah's Witnesses don't want you to know. Uh, I think the first or second uh, topic he discussed in scripture that he showed was this whole thing about ritually rejecting Jesus. And I think that was another, uh, just another really good reference. Because, I mean, it really, you know, does see, if you look at the big picture, we really do ritualistically reject Jesus. And that is a little um, scary especially the ways that it happens so subtly. Another thing that's interesting is that if you go to the Jehovah's Witness glossary, and, and all of this, like I said, I have not said one thing false. So my brothers and sisters, people at the Kingdom Hall, all of you are more than welcome to do this research for yourself. You can look at it and see it for yourself. This is no propaganda. This is no altered apostate half-truth literature. This is straight out of the horse's mouth and the straight up truth. But if you go to the glossary, the Jehovah's Witness glossary, Jehovah Jews, Jesus is not in the glossary. Why is Satan in the glossary, but Jesus is not in the glossary? Why do we not partake if Jesus told us to partake? Why is it that Watchtower says that they mediate for us, the governing body mediates for us, but Jesus does not. Are we supposed to fear Jesus more than we're supposed to fear mankind? Isn't it Jesus who's supposed to be our main authority? Aren't we supposed to pray in Jesus' name? We don't pray to the 144,000. We don't expect them to mediate for us when we pray. No, we pray straight to Jesus. 
Isn't it him that we should be afraid of instead of disobeying Watchtower doctrine? Isn't it him we should be afraid of when he says, I am your mediator? And Watchtower says, Jesus is not your mediator. We and the rest of the 144,000 are. That's really something to think about. Anyways, these are just a few things that I was thinking about. These are a few things that bothered me, and this is why I personally, me personally, this is why I can't go to another memorial again. 